The next thing that we're going to talk about is the schematic editor. We'll talk about navigating around the schematic editor. We'll talk about configuring our motors, our sensors, and our controllers. And we'll also talk about uh, the live testing options that the schematic editor allows you to do with our sensors and our controllers. We're going to talk, pop back into lab view here for a second. And we'll go ahead, we'll close our VI here, and we'll go we'll find ourselves back at a robot product center. Again, your home base, if you will, for all your programming. We'll go ahead and open up our schematic editor. In LabVIEW fashion, it shows everything in a very graphical manner here, as you can see. We have our NXT brick. Up here, we have several empty ports in from the template in the FTC. We can, the, these top three ports are generally used for your LEGO uh, motors, NXT Mindstorms, you may or may not use them. Um, on your left here, you can see connection settings with your brick, again, USB or battery level, firmware and free space. You can navigate around just by clicking and dragging, and you can center with this button here if you ever find yourself getting lost. Let's take a look at uh, what's connected to our four ports here. This is all, if you were to start a blank project, you would see everything blank here, but since we've opened up an FTC template, everything's pre-configured for us. But we'll go ahead and poke around and see what, other, what else we can do. If you click an arrow, there's several different sensors here that you can define for any port, and we also have motor controllers, and we'll talk about those. There's a variety of sensors that you can use and implement for, for any program, whatever needs you have. This here is, we'll click on it, it's a DC motor controller. This is how our program interacts with our motors that are going to run our wheels. You can notice that you can rename your controller here. Um, you can do the same with sensors, motors, and everything. And naming is a, is a good convention to get in the habit of. It, it allows for uh, easy programming down the line. And you'll see a few examples of that um, a little bit later in this webinar. And again, we can see our battery reading. This is from our, our separate Tetrix battery and the amount of battery going through our motors. And we can see that it's in NXT port 1, and it's the first controller in the daisy chain. What daisy chaining is, you can see here in the daisy chain port, we have a servo controller. Though we are only taking up one port in the NXT brick, we are able to, to communicate with our motor controller that can control our DC motors as well as our controller that controls our servo motors. We'll go ahead and talk about uh, the DC motors for a bit now. If we click our motor, again we have our labels and naming these will come in handy down the line and you'll see why. You can see what port, your controller, and what motor. As you can see the left is motor 1 and the right is motor 2. And we also have testing settings here. You can give it a power and you can actually go ahead and test your motors live without even writing a line of code. We'll go ahead and do that. And you could probably hear in the background the motor starts running and you can live as it's still running, you can slide this, it speeds up. You can take it to zero and it should stop. And if you put it to a negative value, you should see your wheel running in the in the backwards direction. Now you'll notice that this reverse box is checked. This is because on your robot, your two motors are mounted in the opposite direction of each other. So in order to get them both going in the same direction, you'll have to reverse it. By, by doing it in the schematic editor, it's a global edit that, uh, that allows you to not have to worry about it in your code or compensating for that. And to, to know whether or not you should have this box checked off, just make sure if you have a negative value, it's going backwards, positive value, going forwards. The next option here is an option for an encoder, which is a, a separate option. And what encoders allow you to do is measure rotations of your DC motors, which allows you to do several other things programmatically. Uh, we're not going to talk about encoders too much in, uh, in this webinar. Again, your right wheel, all the same options, labeling, important, all your schematics here. You can test that too, you can hear that. Again, make sure it's forward, backwards and you can hear that running there. Next, we're going to talk about our servo motor controller. As we can see, there's another daisy chain port for our servo motor controller. So we can, we can line up several motor controllers and you can have quite the elaborate setup on your robot if you wish 
while still only using one port on your NXT controller. We'll see that this servo port, we can have up to six servos. For our Army Gripper FTC bot, we can see that there are two by default. Again, they're labeled gripper in arm, so we know exactly which servo corresponds to what physical part on our hardware. And again, naming is, is going to be helpful down the line when you're, when you're choosing which servo you want to move. When you're in your block diagram writing code, you're going to see exactly what's what, and it's going to come in handy and save you time. Again, we see what port, controller, and which servo number it is. You can see gripper servo 1, arm is 2, and that corresponds to which port it's actually plugged in or which channel on your on your motor controller physically and much like the DC motors we can actually test live our motors you could probably hear it going there I can scroll scroll this little uh, bar here and our servo is actually gonna open and close as I do that and I can disable that and again you can see the position value is between 0 and 255 but uh, down here, that translates into a 0 and 180 degree position. The servos that, that we're using for the Armin Gripper are not continuous servos, which means they have a limited range to only 180 degrees. Here we have the arm. Again, same as the Gripper, same as any servo. We can test that live, make sure it's working properly. And that way, you know that it's your code that's wrong, not uh, your robot. So. Next, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at our sensors. There's a plethora of sensors that you can hook up. By default, again, your FTC bot is going to have an ultrasonic, a light, and a touch. And you'll notice down here in the left, it's giving you a live readout of its distance reading. You can have that output in inches or centimeters. And if I move my hand in front and away from our sensor here, you can see that it reads out distances live. Similarly, we have our light sensor here, and that's going to output a light intensity value. Right now, I'm holding a white piece of paper in front of it, and you can see it's a fairly steady value, and I'll move it over top of a black line here, and you can see that it spikes down. Using these, uh, these sensor diagnostics, you can find thresholds, which we'll talk about later, which will allow you to program based on on your surroundings and this this will help you figure out well any values for your code what you're going to need to know before you start to program again we have our touch sensor here and we have a number of of options we can test released so at this point it is released so we have a one or a high value as soon as we hold it down it goes to zero and when I release it it goes back up press is simply the opposite. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a high value when it's pressed, like now, and it's going to go back to zero when I release it. Bumped. How that's going to work is it's going to stay at zero. I'm pressing and holding the button now. It's not doing anything, but once I let go, it's going to spike up and down quickly. Um, all the sensors, they have their own various different diagnostics that you can read out, and it's, it's all very helpful that you can get all these values and info from your sensors to make sure they're working properly and make sure they're all configured before you even have to write any code. So that there is the schematic editor, and we are going to go back to our PowerPoint for a second. Great. Thank you, Greg. Yep. So the next topic is joystick driving. One of the other really nice features of, um, of LabVIEW with, uh, with the Tetrix system is the ability to drive your robot just as we've seen diagnostics and configuration of the robot without writing any code. Okay, so the joystick driving, we're going to talk about our, our remote control editor. We're going to talk about configuring joystick and actually running it. So this is a picture of what it looks like. Let's go ahead and jump into LabVIEW. So again, we're back here in a robot project center. We're going to go here under our remote control settings, and we see an RCC file. Let's go ahead and open that up. The first thing we notice is a visual representation of our controller, several drive styles. None, obviously nothing's going to happen. Tank, as you can see on our controller here, your right, jo your right joystick it's going to control your right motor. Your left joystick controls your left. Arcade right 
you're going to simply go forward and steer solely with the right joystick. And similarly, your arcade left is using the left joystick. You have a few options here. You have controller one and two. You can have up to two controllers. And here, you define left motor and right motor. As you can see, these are actually the labels that we defined in our schematic editor. So if you were to name them motor one and two, you might have to think back, oh, which did I name which? But since we labeled them conveniently, it's, it's all very easy. And we can define a power setting in case we don't want it running around like crazy here. We just want to slow it down a little bit. We can also invert its direction. So the next, you'll see these tabs here on the left. We'll go to configure robot action. Now this is where you can customize what you want your robot to do based on what you do with your joystick. As you can see here, it's, there's live readings of the buttons as I press them. And you can either press the button on the controller or you can manually click it here. And you'll see if I click a button, there's already some defined actions. The two buttons back here are controlling our arm and it's using a move to position action. There's several actions that you can do but we'll just look at the defaults for now. What this allows us to do, we can use buttons to define several different actions and customize for any robot you might build. We'll go ahead and we'll click the Run Program tab. This is where we choose our controller here. And as we can see, we have live readouts as our controller. Make sure it's connected properly. And we'll have prototype, and we can go start test. Now, as you can see, probably hear in the background, my wheels are running as I move this joystick. And also, as I press the buttons here, I can control my arm and gripper servo motors. And again, you can completely test your robot before you even write a line of code. And also, there's a sensor viewer here. And you can define several sensors and get live readouts, much like you can in the schematic editor, as well as view graphs. That's pretty much it for the joystick driving. We'll go back to our PowerPoint here.